ladies and gentlemen. Um, I guess a little bit after what we said we would get started. Uh, my name is Ray Lutz, R-A-Y-L-U-T-Z. I'm with Citizens Oversight and citizensoversight.org. Tonight we're standing in front of uh, a very uh, unusual event. Uh, it should be unusual, however, in this time, these strange meetings have become all too common. This is a meeting of the head, the former head of the California Public Utilities Commission, who recently had to abandon his post, and in the last several weeks his home was searched, and that information divulged that he had been in, uh, involved in surreptitious meetings with industry executives in Warsaw, Poland, and now we're seeing in many other places across the globe about apparently deals for the San Onofre plant, for the San Bruno explosion disaster, for fires in San Diego, all of these disasters that have happened in, in recent times, we're now becoming aware that it is a concocted bunch of schemes by these heads of the utility commission. And the attendees that you see here tonight are essentially a who's who list of the cronies and people that are in bed with the CPUC and, and the utilities. Somehow they are making money out of your pocket as your a rate payer. As a rate payer, you're required if you're in one of these for-profit utility areas to pay for your uh, utilities. That goes into this their schemes, making our utility rates some of the highest in the nation, if not the highest. The people here tonight are, if you take every single one of these people, you'll either find a green-wrapped shell corporation that is taking money out of the hands of the rate payers and running it through those. You see uh, union representatives, you see people that are contractors. Everybody that gets money from the utilities are coming here tonight. And what is the reason? to pay their respects and their homage to the leader, their fearless leader of this essential white collar crime that's going on. This man, Michael Peavy, was uh, dethroned from his, uh, his position of power and now he's seeking another landing place. This meeting tonight was sanctioned and set up by the University of California Berkeley Goldman School of, of Public Policy, Dean Henry Brady is behind this. He is the one who set up this meeting and when I called him, he refused to, to understand that Michael Peavy has just been found out. This meeting in Warsaw, Poland is a smoking gun and this is gonna take him down and everybody else down that walks in this door, we hope. We hope that we're not asking for punishment per se, we're asking for their rigging of the system to be undone and put back in the hands of openness, propriety, and democracy. And out of the hands of essentially what looks like a mafia crime ring. This is, I've only been looking at this for the last two years and I'm astounded at how this system works. I'm astounded at how dirty it is. I'm astounded at how closed it is. I'm astounded at how they have a public process that looks like they're doing something for the public, and it's all a hoax. That public process really doesn't do anything except just look there for show. And behind the scenes, what do you have? You have the private meetings in Warsaw, Poland. You have the private meetings in London, Australia. They're globe trotter trotters. These are federal crimes because they're doing it outside the country. This is a disgusting display of the worst that happens in America right here. This meeting tonight, are everybody bowing down to the king of corruption, Michael Peavy, and his California Public Utilities Commission, which is raping every ratepayer in, the, in, this, in this California that has to pay rates to a public utility. Now, I'm sure that there's a, one or two things that are done that are, rot, that are good by Michael Peavy. 
when you hear his list of things, you say, that guy is almost a, a, a saint. But when you look under the wrapper, you look into each one of those organizations, you find that there's nothing in them. You find that they're just a way to siphon money out of the ratepayer's pocket. I'm here tonight to protest the fact that all of these people who are paid by companies that have financial interests in front of the PUC are here to give money on behalf of Mike Peavy, who is under federal and state investigation for bribery and corruption. I think because government officials who are currently sitting, who have business, are going to be here tonight, and people who are coming to this dinner have business in front of those government officials. So what that is, is just another opportunity for another big, illegal, ex-party meeting that destroys people's faith and trust in government. And therefore, I am here to protest the fact that this potentially big ex-party meeting is occurring tonight in San Francisco. The problems with the current PC are that they no longer follow the law or the process or have the right for interest at heart. Instead, they have been completely co-opted by the companies they regulate. So the regulator has become the last dog of the regulator. That is not what Governor Hiram Johnson wanted in 1911 when the PUC was reformed. That is not what the people wanted when they passed an initiative to reform the then corrupt commission. That is not what the people today want. I believe the people of California need to make their voices known that we will no longer stand for corruption by state regulators who have a job to do in the public interest and they should not be putting their personal interests in front of the public interest. Yeah, stealing more money from the people! Crooks honoring crooks! I've been an intervener at the California Public Utilities Commission on the issue of smart meters and smart meters being forced to be installed on every home. What people don't understand is that uh, the radiation they emit constantly, 24-7, is a, considered a class 2B carcinogen. So we have objected uh, to the forced installation of class 2B carcinogens on people's homes. People have become very, very ill. And what we've seen since the release of the 65,000 emails are emails that prove, without a question of a doubt, the same pattern of the corruption of the CPUC process happening with the smart meter proceeding as happened with the San Onofre rape case proceeding. The um, emails reveal that there was a plan to make sure that the um, the smart meters were fully installed before the proceeding decision would come out. And so therefore, the proceeding was moot. It was uh, a charade. And the, the, it was delayed, and that was uh, participated in by, unfortunately, um, the ALJ, the, the judge at the CPC, and we're really um, speaking out here because this isn't just corruption and they've done naughty things. These are decisions that have been made that have cost people their homes, their lives, um, property damage. This is not something trivial. We can't have the regulators of the, our public utilities not regulated. We have to have them protecting us, the public. So for honoring PV, Commissioner PV, I do have to say that in his uh, defense, he did acknowledge, according to the emails, that People do get pain from being exposed to pulsing microwaves. And he did want to have the utilities make arrangements so that not everyone would have to uh, accept uh, one of these devices on their homes. But he didn't insist upon it. 
and the utilities which has prevailed. So unfortunately, Commissioner PV really did fail us. So I'm thankful that um, we are seeing the pattern of uh, the corruption here so that now we can do something about it. The public has got to stand up for our rights and insist that we be protected from the most powerful industries in our state, which is the utility companies. Thank you. Look, here they are, here they come, here they come, here come some crooks, here come some crooks, here come some crooks. I had an experience at the last uh, meeting of the California Public Utility Commission. I said that uh, that I was happy that uh, Michael Peavy was retiring, but he should go to jail. And at which point the highway patrolman came up and tried to arrest me for speaking at the uh, meeting of the California Public Utility Commission. And in fact, the whole meeting was orchestrated because the first part of it was corporate funded people from our tax dollars speaking for hours and hours about how wonderful uh, Michael Peavy was on his retirement. We're talking here about uh, not just criminal corruption, that he was on the take to these uh, corporations, pg and &E and the Southern California Edison. We're talking about people dying because of his malfeasance. Uh, Pacific Gas and Electric fires whistleblowers at, who, at pg and &E who complained about the gas leak in San Bruno. They were fired and they were retaliated against. Whistleblowers have been fired at Humboldt College as a result of what's going on. Uh, so the workers, unfortunately, are trying to do the right thing, and they're retaliating against exactly by Michael Peavy in, in cahoots, uh, cahoots with uh, cahoots with the uh, PG&E in Southern California Edison. So what are we saying here today? Well, for us, we're saying that he should be criminally prosecuted, but it's not enough to prosecute Michael Peavy because he wasn't alone in this corruption. These utilities which are supposed to be regulated by him should also be indicted and prosecuted for criminal corruption. They were bribing their way to get special favors from Michael Peavy. And who was paying for these special favors? It was the great payers of California who have spent billions of dollars, who have had health and safety problems, who have had problems with the smart meters, who have problems with cell phones. There's not proper regulation for the protection of the people of California. This is what the California Public Utilities Commission was supposed to do. It was supposed to protect the people against those interests that have a lot of money. And they have billions of dollars, and their billions of dollars comes from the ratepayers. That's where their money comes, from us, from the people of California. Now, it is true that, as a matter of fact, the PG&E customers pay far more in, in, uh, in their payments than, uh, at Southern, uh, than Sacramento Public Utility District. And the reason is, it's a private utility. They have spent tens of millions of dollars fighting public power in California with our money, with our money, fighting public power. This company, which is helping to host this dinner, and we call it uh, Cooks on Crooks Honoring Crooks, that's really what this is, crooks honoring crooks. PG&E is not an efficient company. And one of the key reasons it's not efficient is they want to sell more electricity, they want to sell more gas to make more profit when you can be more efficient. Why is that? Well, the fact of the matter is energy uh, use in California is going down. People are using more solar. People are becoming more efficient, but our rates are going up. How could that be? Why would our rates be going up when energy is, uh, is, is going down? It's because they keep raising the rates. What the utilities have said, and it's not just PG&E and Southern California Edison, but utilities all over the country have said that they have a revenue decline, a long-term revenue decline, and what are they gonna do about that revenue decline? Well, what they're gonna do about the revenue decline is to raise rates for the rate payer and the public nationally to pay for uh, Diablo Canyon, to pay for the decommissioning of these nuclear plants. We're talking billions, tens of billions, and maybe even hundreds of billions of dollars of cost to decommission these nuclear plants. So what we are saying is, we cannot have an efficient electrical system with PG&E and Southern California Edison in charge.
They are not going to do the right thing. It's like banks are not going to do the right thing. Therefore, profits, as is PG&E and Southern California Edison. Our view is there has to be public power under community labor control, and we are also speaking out against the union, I, uh, IBW 1245, which is probably here tonight, and have given previous honors to, to Michael Peavy, and they've given him honors for being a great person. Well, frankly, when you attack workers who are defending health and safety, you're not a great person. When you allow these utilities to do what they've done as far as covering up the health and safety, you're not serving the public and you're not serving the workers who work at pg &E. And all of you know who live in the Bay Area, pg &E is spending tens of millions of dollars in ads about how wonderful the workers are. They have a lot of ads. The workers want to keep the lights on. They want to make sure that people have their power. All well and good, and I support the workers. But the workers are not the problem. It's the management and owners of pg &E who are the problem. They want to do the right thing, but they have a management that basically is interested in making more profit at the cost of the ratepayer and at the cost of the workers. So we're here today to say those people who are coming in to honor PV themselves should be investigated for their corporate ties to this corruption. And also, the Attorney General Kamala Harris, the U.S. Attorney, has to start investigating and prosecuting pg and in Southern California Edison. It's not enough to prosecute the, the regulators. You have to prosecute those people who have actually benefited financially from the corruption in this regulatory agency. Governor Brown, to the last day, in fact, after PV was removed, said he was doing a good job. Well, is the governor on the job? Is he on the job for the people of California or is he on the job for pg and &E? That's what the people have to ask. How could Governor Brown say that he's doing a good job when he's been, uh, yeah, there's evidence of email, there's evidence of, of collusion between him and the utilities. Is that a good job for the people of California? That's a new level of, I think, uh, corruption within the California Public Utility Commission. And Governor Brown, by saying he's still doing a good job, even if he was forced out, of, out to leave, is actually not serving the public. He needs to apologize to the people of California for telling the people that Michael Peavy is doing a good job. And we have to recognize that the connections that these uh, utilities have are very deep. They give money, they give a lot of money, they give a lot of PR, and they want to prevent the people of California from having real control over regulation. This is something we're here today to stop. We're saying they have to be prosecuted, and we say people have to be educated about the role of Michael Peavy and the utilities, and we have to have a system in which people are really protected in California. So thank you very much. Tonight we are here to watch a walk of shame. We are saddened because so many of these people are our friends. Where many of us who happen to be Democrats are aligned with them philosophically, emotionally, and historically. But Dr. King taught us long ago that non-cooperation with evil is as much a moral duty as cooperation with good. And we cannot cooperate, we cannot ignore, we have to give testimony that our friends and neighbors and family in some cases that are coming through those doors aligned with our governor, holding important positions in labor, a dean from the beloved University of California, Berkeley, all of whom are brought together and held together by the glue of corruption spread by Mr. Peavy. We are here to witness who shows up and to try and encourage them to walk away from the corruption. The impact of what is happening at the California Public Utilities Commission is hard to understand for some people who are well off, but for the people that I represent, for the woman I represent who delivers meals to terminally ill patients every day, who are terrified to open up their bill, not just from Pete, not just from SEMPRA and sdg &E, but all of their bills, but in particularly the bills that they get from the utilities because they're the highest in the country. 
They're the most oppressive. Our businesses, our families, our military, our universities, our nonprofits are all being exploited and used and abused and injured, and we need to have it stop. So this is a small event tonight for us, but those of us that have been working on this for some time are starting to see momentum. We're starting to see this word spread. Our wonderful members of the media are stepping forward and they're beginning to ask questions. And they're beginning to gather documents. Our state attorney general courageously has stepped in and has initiated an important lawsuit and in the very first publicly known effort has issued search warrants. And the Attorney General's office is aligning itself with the people. Our U.S. Attorney in San Francisco is doing so. Our message today is it's time to stand up. It's time to speak out. We need our U.S. Attorney in San Diego. We need our U.S. Attorney in Los Angeles to look into the $5 billion fraud. $5 billion, that's not a made up number. That's what the people of Southern California will have to pay for electricity from the San Onofre plant that will produce no electricity. What type of world do we live in when our citizens under Michael Peavy are made to pay $5 billion for electricity that they're not receiving. How can that possibly be just or correct under any, any conceivable set of circumstances or set of arguments? So we're all here tonight together to celebrate the positive of reform, to celebrate the goodness of good people coming together, and hopefully to start to turn the tide on the forces of corruption and to say in the year 2015, as in the year of 1912, that the leadership in California stood up and said no more. We are going to restore our state government, our public utilities, all of our political figures to representation of the needs of the people and to stop the idea that public office is an opportunity for private profit.